Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for the chance to be here. I'm Wayne Sneath, Director of Experiential Learning, also faculty in the College of Arts and Sciences, and wanted to um, share with you some exciting uh, new opportunities for students around the excellence system. So beginning um, many, actually before the fall of 17, we had started doing assessment of excellence system competencies, those nine core learning outcomes that we believe are critical for our students to be successful, not only with us, but also with employers. But in the fall of 17, we talked about how might we better recognize those students that really excel within the excellence system areas. So we began a process of what we're calling certification in the excellence system. So <clears throat> initially, this has only been available to marketing students. We kind of piloted with the marketing program. We did expand in fall of 18 to the computer science program. But students who are in courses that have assessments for excellence system at a mastery level, at a higher level, three or 400, um, are able to opt into the certification process. It's not a requirement, doesn't have any impact on their grade, but it's an opportunity for recognition. So during that certification process, not only do their course level faculty assess the assignments that are measuring those outcomes, but so do small teams of expert faculty in the area <clears throat> that kind of confirm if a student has reached a certain level of proficiency. So really certification for us means that the students have demonstrated a very high skill level in, for example, critical thinking or problem solving or written communication. Uh, for the two programs that I mentioned, marketing and computer science, all nine excellent system competencies are available for certification recognition. So we really believe this is a way to set students apart that receive certification. Um, for those that are seeking internships with us or to, to um, kind of convey to employers their soft skill level, these are certainly the excellent system areas are certainly things that we hear from employers that are critical for student success in addition to what they're getting through hard skill and, and programs. So um, previously, we had a kind of digital recognition via a certificate and a letter from the provost that would go into the student's permanent record. The student would also have access to it and he or she could use that in an interview or in a job application to kind of showcase how we've recognized their proficiency in the excellence system. But <clears throat> that didn't allow us a very good way to track uh, over time um, what students were really achieving uh, the certifications that allow us to report on it. So worked closely with, and I want to say thanks to folks in the registrar's office, particularly uh, Jessica Powers and Donna Millam for developing, and UCC for developing a process for what we're calling certification notation courses. So this will allow for students to actually be <clears throat> recognized for their proficiency on the academic transcript. So that gives us obviously a permanent record and a way to report on this over time. So here's an example of a newly developed notation course. And I want one thing to be really clear. These are not, not credit-bearing courses, and students don't register for them. They go on their transcript after they've earned certification through the process I described before. And they actually only show up on the transcript as a CR credit. So it's not really a zero or one, two, three credit. It's just a recognition. So this is a um, description for, for example, if a student earns certification in global and intercultural competence, this would be, uh, description would be included both in the catalog, but it would show up on the transcript as the top line there, Cert 401 Global and Intercultural Competence with the credit. And it would be in the same semester in which uh, the student earns, uh, is enrolled in the course in which they would earn this. So for example, in marketing, students would earn certification in global competence in marketing 421, which is international marketing. So if they're enrolled in that course and they want to opt in, the faculty will know that. We make a form available to the students that they can opt into that process, and that triggers me to start working with the faculty on the assessment process. So again, they don't have to register for the course, so that's not an issue. They're not on the academic schedule. Okay, These are only the way to transcript, and they're added after a student earns uh, certification in a particular semester. So they will be included in the 1920 catalog with full descriptions, as well as the process uh, indicated there. And as I mentioned, really all students have to do is opt in in the courses where certification is available. 
<clears throat> they obviously have to submit the required assignments so that they can be assessed by both their course faculty and those small teams. And they do need to score at a mastery level, and we have the scales out on the website for how different ranges of scores uh, would lead to mastery level certification. So we're really confident that as we roll this out to larger groups of students, it's gonna be a good way for us to um, help them enhance their professional profile, make a case to employers about the soft skills that they have demonstrated, and it'll be a great way for us to kind of set some targets for how many students are earning certification and work to improve the numbers that not only apply but also earn that. Oops. So, very quickly, any IM questions, any audience questions? Yes. Hey, Wayne. Hi. This is exciting, because I was in on some of the early, early conversations about this system. Um, for a student who is opting in and they do not meet the mastery level score, is there an opportunity for them to take feedback and revise their assignment for the assessment group to review their project again? Right. We, not at this point in time. Um, that assessment usually is one of the final parts of the course. And so the assessment happens by the small team after the fact. Um, what we have been doing, though, in those mastery level courses is doing more prep for the students to understand the parameters of the assignment, to give them other prep assignments so that they're really well prepared to, to excel on the, uh, on the final assessment. So not at this time, but it's something, actually something we should consider. And I'll, we'll think, give that some thought. And we're kind of early in the process, so we haven't had that many students that have opted in, we've had some, but not that many that have ever appealed, if you will, uh, not being awarded a certification. Good, thanks. Hey Wayne. Hi. Um, how is this being communicated to students that it's available? Yeah, it's, it's predominantly through the course level faculty and the courses where the assessments are, but I'm also, um, if for every course that has an opportunity, I'm communicating directly with the whole student body in that course a couple times a semester to remind them of that opportunity. There are also materials included in the <clears throat> course shells in Blackboard that make them aware of it and those specific courses that are mapped for excellence system certification. So those are the two primary ways, well, three ways, faculty, myself, and the, the course information. I have a question from Holland. How do advisors identify courses with the ES option? Right now, it would be on the Excellence System website. There's a master curriculum map, and you can see the, the programs that, uh, in particular, again, marketing and computer science are the only two right now. You can see the courses in those that are designated as mastery level um, Excellence System assessment courses. All right, any last questions for Dr. Sneed? All right, Wayne, thank you so thank much you. for being here today. Thank you. Hi, everybody, my name is Patty Breckbeel, and I'm the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, and I'm here to talk about some of the, uh, some updates, uh, primarily with the Biological Lab Science Program. That's been a program in the making for several years, but we are gonna have our first set of graduates this year, and I think we finally got it figured out um, how it should look and how it should run. So I'm gonna talk about some of those things um, today and answer any questions that you might have. So um, there's, going to, there's a revised program sequence for the program, and I will show you that in the next slide. And let's see, I'll just do that right now. Um, and I don't expect you to digest this all right now, but um, the science classes have remained in the same sequence, um, and some of the gen ed had been moved around. What we found as we changed some things that the final year got really light on credit hours for students, so we wanted to balance that out a little bit. So um, that sequence is changed. We have developed Physics 210 and 210, oh, was there a question? No. Physics 210 and 210L, the lab class for online purposes. 
the College of Technology, and I'm sure you'll be hearing more about that this afternoon, has applied for accreditation. And with that accreditation, they need more science for their students. So they've elected to add physics to their program. In order to serve all the tech students, we needed to develop an online version of this class because the program is both in seat here at Lettinga and in our online classes. So we have developed the physics 210 and 210L for online. Now we want to ask our biological lab science advisors to please encourage our students in the biological lab science program to take the in-seat class and the hands-on lab. Because in that program we are preparing them to be hands-on lab technicians. So we really want them to take that in-seat class and hands-on lab. We just encourage that. So. Um, it's going to be the same class, it's going to be the same rigor, but we'd like our lab science students to take it in seat. We also have a different sequence for the 210 lab. Um, that's going on online. The online course is going to be offered in winter. The in seat course will be offered in fall. So that will give students a couple of different options for scheduling. Okay. We had some back and forth with the grading system for some of the classes in the lab science program. We started off with a C or better for all classes, regardless of whether a student, uh, for our science classes, regardless of what program the student was in. And we found that that was a detriment to some students. Um, sometimes a D in passing is the grade the student wants to get and get out of that class and get some credit for the work that they have done. So now what it looks like is that for classes that are in the, bio, if the students in the biological lab science major and they're taking classes in our major, they need the C or better for that class to count toward their requirements. It's very much like the nursing science classes in some of the nursing classes. So that's something new this year. And you can see the statement in the catalog that you'll see in the catalog. And that was it, short and sweet. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, well, thank you very much. Oh, Su oh, Susan, yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yep, that's right. Can you go back to your first Absolutely. slide and talk to them about the 191, 192? Absolutely. Thanks. Um, yeah, there were a couple things on here that I thought would be on subsequent uh, slides, so I went ahead. Um, we've eliminated the Biology 477 course. That was never offered, um, so that should be um, not a problem. The Biology 490 internship course, we have made that an elective. And though we always encourage students to get any kind of experiential learning that they can, and we all know the value of internships and hands-on and getting out into the workplace, um, it was a, a cause of anxiety for some students, fitting it into their schedule um, and finding a site. So we've made that an option for students. And if you find any students who might be interested in a teaching career, there are suggested electives that would help them if they wanted to go into our urban education program. And those electives are listed on the slide up here. E U E D U 191 and 92. And Susan will probably tell you more about those, but those are practice courses where students will actually go into some kind of situation working with students and develop some skills in an urban setting. And then um, EU, e, e, U, E, D, U, say that 10 times fast, um, 330, and then SOCH 238. So those would be recommended electives if you have a student who might be interested in going into education.